Hey, welcome in everybody to the grittiest take, the Sports Fanatic News Philadelphia Flyers podcast as I am Joe Borig, Pro Joe, joined by the wonderful Steel Flyers of SteelFlyers.com. Check out that fine website. We're off the wall hockey. John Pierlo, obviously Peyton on the radio, many great others. Slapshot Sweethearts will be featured on there. Flyers Nitty Gritty, the list goes on. But we're here <laughs> to preview the Pittsburgh and Flyers series. How you doing, Steel? Oh, man, I'm doing great. I'm excited. Uh, we got Pittsburgh and and uh, and uh, Philadelphia going at it tonight. I, I'm the Battle of Pennsylvania, and we're going to have fans in the stands. In Pittsburgh, yeah. And in Philly, too. Yeah, when they come back, yeah, the city did end up okay in that. So they will have, I think it's about 30, um, 3,100. 30. 2,800, I think it's 2,800, I think is going to be for tonight's game at the uh, uh, PPG Center. And, yeah. then, I, and then I think uh, 3,100 is going to be for the, for the uh, Wells Fargo Center when they come back to Philly. Um, so congratulations uh, to that. Yeah, it's great to see. It's a start. Obviously, it's not a lot of fans, but it was wonderful when covering the fandoms, just going to the game and seeing some fans having it. At yeah, some of an see? Actual game. like having it like not <laughs> feel like you're the only people there when you're reporting yeah. on the game. And it's just like when there's no play going on, you can hear a pin drop across the other end of the arena. <laughs> like that just isn't normal. So it was nice yeah, exactly. to have fanfare and have the fans back now. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, you, one thing that you mentioned, too, you got to be following Joe because he's the man. Pro Joe, he's the man. you got to check us out on SteelFlyers.com. you got to check uh, his YouTube channel out. Please hit the like and subscribe. You can check us all out, too, at SteelFlyers.com. Uh, you can check out all the shows, Hockey Writers, Inc., uh, Pearl of Wisdom Show, Sports Fanatic Show, uh, Off the Wall Hockey. you got it all. You can get it right all in the same spot. I have a question for you, bro. Yeah. We got Sidney Crosby is going to be out for this game. And probably yeah, we wish him well, series. obviously. Yeah. A COVID yeah. family man. Hope yep. he gets well soon. Yep. Yeah. Wishing, wishing you nothing but the best. Hoping for a speedy recovery. Um, we got Philadelphia is coming back. They got TK coming back into the lineup. We've got an entire roster now full of healthy players, with the exception of Frost, obviously. Um, and now we're going up against a team in Pittsburgh who um, has been playing better as of late, but now is going to be sitting their major star. What do you think is going to be the major factor for tonight, aside from Crosby being out? I think it's going to be similar to how you played Buffalo. You played with a much better attack and aggressive mentality where if you look yeah. at Pittsburgh and their defensive numbers, it's not like they're the sexiest looking numbers, excuse me, either. <laughs> I mean, you, they don't. They have uh, Latang's playing solid. Uh, Michael Matheson's playing mid. I mean, ever, he's playing better this year, but still very just league yeah. average for yeah. the minutes he plays. Marino's an above average defenseman at this point. He's not scoring points wise, but right. in terms of what he's able to do and produce minutes wise. And then Olivier Joseph is good, but you can attack them. They're young. They're not guys that are more defensive in the Cody CCs and Mathesons of the world are not the quickest on their skates, obviously. So we have guys that are able to get around them. When it comes to Latang, he's a guy that sometimes is a Flyers killer as well. So you want to watch him fire in it from the point. He has a much bigger role in the power play as well. And Pittsburgh's still a team you don't want to put on that power play. Exactly. Um, he has much bigger numbers and when Crosby's out. So you want to look out for him. But it's still, you just got to attack because Yari, who uh, looking at a Penguins uh, reporter earlier, said it's going to be hard. And Yari has an 894 save percentage and a 314 goals against. So if you push it on the net against him, you should be able to get some goals like you did exactly. against Johansson and Carter Hutton. So I think yeah. it's just the same mentality you got to come in with in this game as you did in the uh, Buffalo game. Because when we played against Buffalo, uh, the Flyers played uh, really well, even though they were missing Jack Eichel in the first uh, in the first game. Now Jack Eichel did come back in, in the second game, but he was not nearly as effective as he has been uh, uh, in, and in the past. And they still stopped their power play. That was and, the and, and they were big over for what six. 
They had three in the first yeah. game and three in the second game, and they completely stopped the best power play unit in the league right now. Okay, now granted they were missing Jack Eichel for that first game, but still, the fact that they were able to do that—that that to me, I think, is going to be the biggest factor in this game. Is the fact that Sidney Crosby is not is out. They got Malkin, who is now going to have to be responsible for picking up the slack. I don't think that's going to happen, as as much as everybody touts that. Okay. Yes, Pittsburgh has been playing better as of late, um, and I and I like the move. The the rather huh, interesting move that former GM Ron Hextall did by gathering up to get Mark Friedman. Friedman from us. Yeah. I have a feeling that you're going to see Friedman in this series against the Flyers. I just have that feeling. Yeah, it could because he has familiarity. It is interesting. I think the Flyers showed, I was talking to my friend Zach about this on PlayStation, that it literally showed that they're content with their defense now and seeing where it goes because you saw Tenorti. And if you look at the way waiver orders go with where Boston was in the standings, we should have been before them to be able to claim somebody. Tenorti's yeah. another just kind of keep it simple, stupid, just gets it done defenseman. Over time, that's what he developed into after being a first-round pick years ago. Yep. So the fact that we passed him by when he's similar to a Friedman play style shows that I think they didn't want Friedman to go, but if he went, they were content with the group they have, and they're trying to see who could step up where. When you look at Braun, he played his best game with Myers, or with Sanheim, excuse me, not Myers, and then Myers – can be the guy, like I was saying on a podcast we did before, maybe yeah. to help Hag out yeah. and have Hag be the guy that stays back, that allows Philippe Myers to kind of do a combination of both things, which is what he's flourished at in the minors, but has become a good all-around guy and step back some of his offensive game to do such. You saw Sanheim step that up in the Buffalo series. I was just going to say, you yeah. See Myers step that up. Uh, in this series because he has that type of skill. It's just okay. sometimes with the lines he's on, he doesn't know kind of which way to go. With Hag, who's a defensive cat, you can kind of just know where you're going to okay, go. Okay, I got what you're saying now. Yeah, I got what you're saying now because we have guys that are very similar to Mark Friedman's skill set already on the team, and when you have a number of guys that have that same level of skill set, you tend to find that one of them gets to be expendable, and that's sadly what was the case with Friedman, I really hated to see that move. I was not happy about that at all. I um, wasn't either, but it happens. It's the nature of the business. Kind of. uh, you know, it is, that's the way it is. And, and you know what that's going to end up doing? That's going to end up freeing up uh, an opportunity either for somebody else to come and step in or uh, that might allow the Flyers to maybe acquire somebody that could help out on the back end. Who knows? I mean, you know what I mean? Who knows? The fact that we got absolutely nothing for Friedman is that's the hard pill to swallow right there as far as being a Flyers fan. Yeah. I mean, you figure I think Hextall might have still been working for them when he went back there when, when they claimed him. Mark Alt's a guy with the Kings. Uh, funny how they're both named Mark. They turned him into a solid depth guy now where now you let another Mark go just on waivers. Um, but I think Freege is a little bit superior to Mark Old, but uh, yeah. it's going to be interesting to see what he can do in Pittsburgh because they don't have, as I was just talking about on their defense, other than CeCe's playing solid, but he's, again, a slower defenseman, someone that can bur bur burn a little bit, excuse me, and kind yeah. of burn on his skates, but kind of be a guy like CeCe that doesn't make the stupid mistakes when he's playing his best which Gosh. is finally what CC's been able to become in his late 20s. Yeah. Where he used to be a defenseman that didn't always use his head as straight as he should have. But, <laughs> yeah, I think, though, I think, though, now what we should move on to, as you were talking about biggest factors um, for us, when it comes to Pittsburgh, and you talked about how you don't think Malkin would step up, who only does have 12 points this year in 20 games and a minus eight, so he is struggling. Um, who do you think is someone the Flyers are going to have to really look out for then in Crosby's absence that's really going to be able to step up, that they're going to have to put their markers on to be able to defend and shut down? Well, you're going to get a you're going to get offensive by committee now. 
from from the Penguins, and which uh, has not been their strong suit. And and I think you're going to see Kapanen step up a little bit. And I think you're going to see that line that Malkin's going to be on. You're definitely going to have to pay attention to Malkin. Because although he might not be having his best year right now, he's still just as dangerous. He is still just as much of a flyer killer as, as any of the other players on, on that Penguins team. You understand what I'm saying? So even though he, he's not necessarily you know got the points to show for it, you still have to account for that talent. OK, and you can't just try to poke check them guys. You you got to you got to hit them. OK, and I think that's what's going to have to be. the. It doesn't matter who the Penguins are going to cycle through there. Right. Um, we need to do exactly what you said and play like the Flyers played against Buffalo and hit anything that moves and just freaking unload the puck on Yari. <laughs> what? Yeah. That, that, that exactly. Right yeah. If we if the Flyers do that, OK, look, the last three games now, the Flyers have outshot each opponent. Now, granted, two of them have been Buffalo. But so what? OK, we still outshot them significantly by a significant margin. Not just- And you shut down the top power play in the league six times, three of which were with Eichel. And otherwise, uh, they still have some pretty good guys in Hall, and you have the Olifsons of the world and Reinhardt's of the world on that power play. Exactly. Otherwise. That's what I mean. So I'm, I'm looking at this to be a really good game, but I think if the Flyers play that same mentality, shoot the puck, play defensively, stay out of the box as much as possible and, and do the right things. I, I don't think that this is going to be as much of a problem for people as people think. Yeah. Cause Pittsburgh's power play, uh, it's not graded. Well, it is 26 in the league. It's just the premise of, as you said, flyers killers. This team has a lot of guys. Crosby's one of them who's out now, but the tang. McCann's, uh, a guy that stepped up, um, for the Penguins this far, you don't want him to become a new Flyers killer. Gensel has kind of been one already since he snapped into the league. Uh, Kapitan, you don't want him becoming a new one either. Latang's always been one. Russ since going there has had a couple of good games against us. And he's my player to look totally out Totally forgot He's about him. Yeah. Guy. Since going there, Brian Rust, whenever they have some injuries, and he's doing good this year, 15 points in 20 games with about 20 Skating minutes. Skating really time. well, yeah. He mm-hmm. usually propels his game once guys go out. So I would say for me, Rust is a big guy to look out for. Great point. You want to be able to guard him, when, especially if you put them on the power play. Even though they're ranked 26, you don't want to give them chances there because that's when they can pounce. Because 5-on-5 five five Pittsburgh, especially with Crosby out, is probably only going to be average unless if Malkin really is able to take it up about Agreed. two notches this game Agreed. from what he's playing. Because you said he's still dangerous, but he's not playing at the yep. level Malkin should, and he has to bring it up a couple notches for it to become very dangerous five on five level i would think so uh, agreed yeah agreed and you know here's something else i'm gonna think too pittsburgh is not built to come from behind either you get no. you get a couple of goals up on them and and you can you can pretty much now look i i wouldn't sit back i mean i would turn the heat up and and keep attacking just like you said at the beginning of the show this has to be an attack first Offense, because that that's how AV has been building this system, as an attack-first offense. We're now starting to see the fruition of that, where guys are now starting to buy in. We're starting to, to gather the talent to be able to carry this out. Okay, and the only way it works is if you get guys that are responsible for the 200-foot game. You still need to be able to cover the, the back end just because you're a forward. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that's why I think this game here, I think these next three games for the Flyers are going to be very pivotal. Because if they take these three games, or even if they drop one, if they go two and one in these next three games, I think that's going to, I think that's going to be a statement that the Flyers are putting on the East that they're coming. Yeah, and I think that's more likely. I think it would be a little naive to expect a sweep even with Crosby out just because when you play rivals, it always ups the ante, ups the intensity of the game. So I think you're likely to have a game. It would be nice if that game you lose, maybe you push it and you get a point out of it. Yeah, like so then overtime you get, or whatever. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. you end up taking five out of the six points uh, I'm with you. rather than just four. 
But, um, yeah, I mean, this team, if we're able to produce the same shots and stay as aggressive, the one thing Pittsburgh's pretty decent at doing, they're eighth in the league defensive in shots on goal allowed at 29, where we allow 32.1, which is 28. So if you can pepper them, that's a good sign that the Flyers' offense is really starting to get going in terms of aggressive shooting, because in terms of goal total, they've been good all season. They're fourth in the league at 3.39. But yeah. in terms of actually peppering the net and not just being opportunist, we've seen that the last three games, like you said. So that's big to see. Um, I think a big key coming into this game is, though, someone we obviously have to get into who's going to be a big key for this whole series, which is the return of Travis Konechny, because he's a guy that's not only a good key offensive player for the Flyers, but a key pest for the opposing team. And you're playing one of your arch rivals in Pittsburgh, so none of them in a perfect time for Konechny <laughs> to come back. So yeah. what do you think of them starting him? I think it's wise to start him on the fourth line and build him back up coming back from the COVID list. Yeah. What do you think of him coming back and the impact he could have on this three-game series against <laughs> Pittsburgh that goes from today to Saturday? Yeah, we talked about this at the, at the the before we were on air, but I – I'm glad to see TK back. That's great. I'm glad to see that he's been able to um, get off the list and come back. Uh, this is for the first time we're going to see a, a healthy Flyers team for the most part. Um, and I think that's going to be amazing in and, of, in, in and of itself. Is that for the first time this season, really, you know, we have pretty much everybody back. 99.5% because Frost, obviously. You know, but I'm not a fan of taking out uh, uh, Kubel, Mac. I am not a fan of taking out Nicholas uh, Abe Kubel. Um, I thought they could have probably, I thought AV could have probably taken out um, Bunneman um, because of, I think you're going to need some of that physicality that Knack brings. He, to me, he's a very good four. He's one of the best four checkers that we have. OK, I think he makes good decisions with the puck. I, I don't understand why TK's in and Knack is out. I understand why TK's in, but I don't understand why Knack is coming out. I think uh, <laughs> it does have to go. The more I thought about it, um, it, since we talked about it in the pre-show, center as well. Bunneman's a steady center. Patrick, they moved to the wing to try to get going with Hayes and G on his line. So... You want to put in a center to be able to um, kind of, or you want to keep in a center, excuse me, to be able to actually have depth at center where TK can play center, but you much prefer him on the wing. So if you were to keep in a knack and take out a uh, Bunneman, you would either have to put TK or knack at center when you would probably have to put TK at that point when you much prefer him on the wing in his first game back. Okay. So the more I think about it, I think it's just about positioning okay. more so than the fact that Bunneman's obviously a big kid at 6'1", 207 that can provide up defense and physicality. Right. I think it just had to go with he's a straight-up center, yeah. where TK okay. you prefer on the wing. Rafa, we saw the center experiment wasn't the best last year, so you would prefer to keep him on the wing. And Watts obviously has been doing good at center. And it seems like Patrick – might end up looking pretty good in time with G and Hayes. So I think you want to see where that goes. So I feel like it's just about positioning, but I guarantee you, I I agree with you. I don't think this will last, which is also kind of what you're hinting at when you say he shouldn't be out of the lineup. I think this is one of those quick one game thing. And then AV is going to figure out how he can rightfully show, bring Kubel back in the lineup. And rightfully so, because he's been playing pretty well. He's stepped up in absences. I think it could just be a rest as well. You get TK in, you bring Kubel back in in the second game on Thursday against Pittsburgh since the series goes every other day, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Then we play Washington Sunday. So I think it might just be all about positioning. But I agree with you. I was surprised when it came to Kubel being the guy out and not a Bunneman or even resting Patrick just to give him a – day to rest uh, since he's coming back off the injury list where uh, he's actually been in for a while now, not on the COVID list where Lindblom just recently came back. So obviously you're not going to rest him again. Right, so, right, um, right, right. 
I could have saw that happening or bought him in, but it is what it is. So far, a lot of the moves they made work. Uh, Braun stepped up with Sanheim the other day. And obviously, I mean, Sanheim uh, but, had one of his best games, and I thought that Braun actually had one of his better games too. And I've I've been I'm I've been a Braun basher since day one, uh, but I have to say that he did play his best game as a flyer the other day when he was paired up with Sanheim. But uh, it, to me, as far as I'm concerned, I I can't see him leave fast enough. <laughs> no, Ed Myers looked pretty good after getting benched. Yeah, pressing him. So so far, other than. TK, who did end up going out shortly there after coming back from his benching, yeah. too. He struggled for about three, four games and then went out. Um, so I think uh, he's different, but I think he'll be doing very good now coming back. Everyone that's come back has looked pretty good. Uh, sometimes uh, getting the rest, you kind of come back with a lot of fire in your belly, especially when you're a player with the personality of a TK. So I see him just I think like that's a big point. Yeah, yeah. Player. Check, having a pretty good game and series and being a pretty big contributing factor uh, when it comes to this uh, three-game series against Pittsburgh. I think as we wrap up our final 10 to 15 minutes, we should get into our three keys are usually a great thing to do when you're talking about series. And I'll let you go first with this. Uh, if you want to go okay. back and forth, we can. So we'll start with That's one okay. key. Yeah, okay. Um, what's your... Number three key, we'll work our way up to the okay. top. Like great ACDC song is a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. That's um, right. But, you know, we'll work our way up to the top. But who's your number three key or what's your number three key for this series? Um, Being able to, to me, get it. To me, goaltending is going to be the third key here. Because even though these games are all against the same team, they're not back-to-back -back nights. So there's now this huge flexibility now with goaltending on both sides, okay? Because and and this was something that I've been reading over the last couple of weeks on the on on in articles and in Twitter and stuff like that. This might be an opportunity to bring in a third goalie during one of these games. You know what I mean? I just think that goaltending is going to be a huge fact, especially for Philadelphia, and and because of the psyche of Carter Hart and especially with how well Moose has been playing. And I think it's going to be key for the Pittsburgh Penguins because Yari really needs to play better. And so does the Smith. I mean, their goaltending just has not been up to snuff this year. And I think if they did have better goaltending, Pittsburgh would be in a much more um, position of control, um, have a much more lucrative, you know what I mean? I think they'd be playing better. So to me, my third my third key is going to be goaltending on both sides. Who's going to be the goalie for the teams on each night? And are we going to maybe see that third goalie pop in? Yeah, I think for the Flyers, it does work out best that you're not having. Some teams had to play back-to-backs, and then you have one day off and then another game. Exactly. You do have this set up as you have it every other day, so I think that benefits you more not having to putting your third goaltender where I feel like that might come into play. Maybe if you want to do it with one of the weekend games, because you do have a back-to-back, -back, then you have Saturday against Pittsburgh. Yeah. Still, and then Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Would I mean, be I was just thinking, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's a possibility. I do like, um, being a big AHL guy now that I have time graduating school finally to pay attention to the minor leagues as much as the majors. Again, I always liked Lyon and think he steps up against big teams. So you putting him in against Pittsburgh and or Washington would definitely fit the quota of big teams where the game you put him in, I can't remember who it was against, but the mediocre game he played was against some like mediocre team where when he played better teams in Colorado, he played them good. And I think Boston uh, was the other team he yes. played good in his yes. NHL career thus far. So yeah. when he plays the bigger opponents, he plays a bigger game. <laughs> so he definitely would fit into that quota. Yeah. I would say that's for okay. sure. So I can okay. see that. But for me, my third biggest key, I goaltending's on my list, but it's not third. Um, for me, my third biggest thing is going to be the defense because it looked like now putting Braun with Sanheim, if Braun can continue playing like he has since coming back, 
Um, if he can, other than like obviously he still makes some of those faulty passes, but other than that, if he can just be the defensive defenseman he's now developed into, because he still has the smarts. The problem is the speed. The he doesn't have the speed to get to where he right. wants to get to, but he knows where he should be. Yeah. But he's looked a little bit better now getting rest. He allows Sanheim, if he can play the way he's playing now, to be the full version of Travis Sanheim and actually pitch in on offense while being great on defense as well. Hag also, if he just knows to go settle back into that defensive role he had down in the minors, as well as when he first came up with his partners now with Myers, so Myers can be the go-up and get-back guy just like Sanheim is on the Braun line, I think those pairings will work out the best. And that third pairing, obviously it's not a make or break like I said in the past, but it's still a big part of the team. Yeah. will actually grade better where we'll, the every yeah, third pairing we've had is graded like bottom 15 <laughs> so yeah. having it now with hag and myers that seems like one that'll be pretty beneficial ghost and provy is really flourishing together ghost looks like he's bouncing back so i would say the defense and how the defense performs defensively but also pitching in on the offensive end, because these lines shape up the best to allow one guy to pitch in and allow the defensive defender to stay back and yep. just kind of do his thing back there. Awesome. You know, that's kind of funny because that would be my, that's going to be my second key is the defense for exactly those reasons that you said. Because I, I believe since coming back from COVID that the Flyers have played their best defensively throughout the entire season. OK, I, I, I feel that um, they're making those better decisions now where before the covid list, you were seeing the 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 forwards were getting too far ahead. OK, and, and therefore those passes from the defense, that first pass up from the D up to the forwards was too far away. Right. And and, and exactly. Teams, yeah. And teams were were keying on that and picking them off right through the neutral zone. And now you got multiple breakaways, multiple odd, odd man rushes on our goalie. Okay. So that's why I think the defense is number two key for me, because they've been playing better. They've been blocking better shots. They've been making better decisions. Okay. Exactly with what you said. Uh, Myers has been able to play his game. Sanheim has been able to play his game. Ghost has been able to play his game. Yep. And you know what else seems to be the case? It seems like some of the pressure has been relieved off of Proveroff over the last, say, three games. It just seems like that valve has been released. And you got guys that are playing way that are, that are playing much better in the defensive zone where it doesn't seem like the team has to rely on Proveroff as much because yeah, other guys are stepping up. Yeah, which is exactly what you want to see because Provy always plays the most minutes. Uh, plays like an Iron Man, an Iron Horse out there. He still has his streak going. Where G unfortunately got it broken up because of the COVID list. Um, but uh, Provy's a great player out there. Continues to grow and get better. And Ghost seems like he's back. So that's why I had uh, defense for me is my third key where we actually flipped our keys where what was your third is my second um, which is uh goaltending well yeah i think i think um hart's going to continue to look very good in this series i think getting that shutout because buffalo still peppers you in terms of their top six and that's something uh that also really Pittsburgh does because their bottom six, other than Teddy Bluger, who has 11 points, is nothing very impressive. They're a top right. six heavy team as well. Um, but I think uh, Hart's going to step up again after a shutout. I'm not going to predict a shutout or anything again, but I think he'll do yeah. well. And I think he's going to do well. I think he'll probably play in two of these three, and Moose will get one of the games. So I don't know if they'll have him go Tuesday, Thursday, then have Moose go Saturday so Hart can play the first game with fans on Sunday. Okay, and, I was and just that would say, actually work yeah, that way. I was just going to say Or how they do it. Yeah. Um, but obviously fans are pretty much as obsessed with Moose as they are with Carter when Moose is going his best because you hear all the big Moose, Moose. chants <laughs> in the Wells Fargo. Even with only 3,100, you still hear that oh, big you'll hear it. 
I'm confident in our goalies. I always stood confident in Hart. It's just he was a player that I said I needed to see more from when we did pass things with Disciples of Ed and other podcasts I do just because that was the simple fact at that point. It's not like I didn't expect to see more at a certain point. It was just when you asked the question, who do you need to see more from, he would have fit into that premise. Where seeing what he did against Buffalo, he seems kind of poised again. He yeah. talked about having fun again and actually enjoying everything leading up to the game again. That's a huge part and benefactor of everything. So I think it's goaltending. I think the goaltending will succeed. So we ended up just flipping ours. Uh, you had <laughs> defense second and goaltending third. third. Yep. I had defense third and goaltending second. So, so that, you, you know, know great minds means, think right? alike, just yep. not in the same order. I was yeah. just going to say, you know what that means, right? That means our number one key should probably be the same. <laughs> well, what's right? your number one key? Okay, my number one key is this. Um, stay out of the box. Do not give Pittsburgh a sniff, okay? And the only way you're going to give Pittsburgh a sniff is if you're constantly going back and forth into the penalty box and giving them power plays. OK, they're not the greatest team in the world on power plays, but I'm here to tell you, if you keep giving them enough chances, guess what? Goals are going to go in. And, and if and if if the Flyers can get that first goal and get maybe one or two goals up on Pittsburgh and then put the hammer down and put the gas pedal down and keep firing and keep just keep on keeping on. That that to me right there, that's gonna that that bodes well for victory for Philadelphia. So that's yeah, my I agree. one key. Stay out of the box, right? Stay out of the box and get that first goal and then just keep hammer down. Yeah, keep rolling with it, stay aggressive with the first goal, stay out of the box. I agree with that. My number one key is kind of bringing it back around as I started at the beginning saying stay aggressive keep pushing like you do with Buffalo concluding with the, along the same premise run your four lines like you yeah. did against Buffalo and stay aggressive because that's why with the last thing I alluded to the fact that Teddy Bluger is the only guy producing in their bottom six the best producer otherwise who has done some stuff against us I think he has two or three of his seven points against us Tanev is yeah. the only guy that has more than two points in their bottom six other than Beluger, who has 11. So they don't have a good bottom six. The Flyers have depth throughout. you got Raffle, Bunny, and TK as your fourth line. Then the return line has looked like one of the better lines. It has been one of the better graded lines. <laughs> I like that you're calling that Limp the return Lund line. I love like that. <laughs> uh, and then you have uh, Drew, Hayes, and Patrick. Has Which I a, like that together. She came back. And obviously, you don't want to mess with that first line. JVR has been a menace. faraby has been a menace. And Coots back. I think it's no coincidence, like you talked about with the defense, the guys actually getting the puck and making themselves available for the defenders. It's no coincidence that's happening when Lawton and Coots are back that are always consistently making themselves available for the defenders. But it's your depth. You have more depth in Pittsburgh. It's staying aggressive and cycling the four lines again is the number one key in these three games should your – Bottom two lines should be able to pound Pittsburgh's bottom yep. two lines where Colton Skeever Easy. is yep. not doing much. He's struggling this year. Lafferty's uh, been a better minor leaguer than an NHL or at this point. Uh, same with Angelo has been kind of along the same premise. Anthony Angelo, he hasn't got much NHL games, but is more of a minor leaguer than NHL or at this point. Uh -huh. So you have a lot of guys, same with Drew O'Connor. So you have a lot of guys that really are depth pieces that are playing key bottom six roles for Pittsburgh, where the Flyers have guys on some teams that would be on a third line. I was just going to say, yeah. Line in their bottom six. So you got to yeah. just pound and pound them and play like the Philadelphia Flyers, and we know they can be on the four check and aggressive and physical like we saw these past three games and be able to get the job done. My number one key would be, Use your depth and stay aggressive through your depth because you should be able to kill Pittsburgh in three games and win two out of three if you utilize your depth right. And that might be why Nax rested because A.V. also knows it'll piss him off. And then on Thursday, he'll be coming in even more pissed off. That's what you need, then, man, is a pissed-off Nax. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, 
then or even do more damage against Pritchard. So he <laughs> no, might that's know a good point, man. Pritchard. I never thought of it like that. I never thought of it like that because, you know, players get that, oh, what do you mean I'm not playing? Because they all want to play. You know, so so when you when you're sitting a player as a healthy scratch, they're looking at that as a demotion or whatever, whatever. Even though you explain it to them that it's not, you know, uh, human nature is well, I'm not playing tonight, so I must be doing something wrong. So I'm going to make it so that he's not going to do this again, right? And that's what he's done throughout his entire career with Philadelphia, is make it difficult for the coaches to to, to get him out of the lineup. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to these three sets of games here. Uh, I, I really think that you made some great points, Joe, as far as how the team needs to play, what they need to do, and what Pittsburgh needs to do. Because, look, let's let's face it. Pittsburgh is going to be fighting and scrapping here at the end for a playoff position. That's just how it's going to fly. We all think that they potentially won't make it. But if they continue to to improve like they have been, then they might be there in the end. Okay, um, so uh, this is not going to be one of those games where you have to, you know, think that you're you're playing Washington next. No, no, you got to concentrate on this. Bring the A game and take care of business here in the next three games. That's for sure. Yeah, they have the same amount of wins as us. They're eleven eight and one. We just are eleven four and three uh, coming in. So. They're a pretty solid team. It's just, uh, as we said, we wish Crosby well and hope he recovers quickly. But from a hockey sense, that should, logistically speaking, make it better for the Flyers if they keep playing the game like they did against Buffalo well, and use their depth, as I said, to be able to win two out of three. I mean, you know, when Cindy Crosby is sitting down, you would kind of hope that your team should be able to swoop in and take advantage of that fact. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a that's entirely true. But did you have any final closing points? As the great Pierlo Wisdom says, we're coming into our full forty-two, 42 almost here. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look, Philadelphia needs to continue doing what they're doing. They, I believe that although the COVID list was bad, that you know multiple players were on it. Um, but I think this was actually that shot in the arm, if I can use that. Um, that the team needed, that rest that they needed, that come together ability that they actually had three practices during that time. Okay. And I think that was huge because that's been the biggest issue throughout the entire year is where guys are, or teams are playing so many games where there's no practice time. And then when you do get a day off, the, the last thing you want to be doing is lacing them up. You want to go sleep. You, you, you need some rest, you know? And so you know, there's, there's very little practice time. So I thought it was key that the Flyers were able to get in a couple of practices before they were able to come back out after being delayed off the COVID list. So uh, I, I really do agree with you. I think the Flyers, as long as they stay aggressive, as long as they play the same way they did against Buffalo and do the same thing, um, I think that they can be just as successful um, against Pittsburgh. And I'm looking for five out of the six points to go to Philadelphia through, from this series. Yeah, so you're looking for the game to at least go to overtime in the game we do lose. Um, yeah. I think uh, I agree with all your uh, final points. Um, I think they're all one of the biggest keys. And I think the other thing that my final point is having two goalies get back-to-back -back shutouts, both of our goalies get that against the Sabres. That's huge coming in. Moose has been great all season. <laughs> Hart yeah. now really showed his best game in that game. I think he's going to continue to show it. So I think – your goaltenders are going to come up big. And in the moments where we've seen some guys collapse, you're going to see the goaltenders really step up and get it done and be a big factor in these three games. I think Moose is likely, in my opinion, to get the final game so Hart can start when everybody returns Probably. back home. Probably. But we'll see how that goes. But either way, I'm confident in our goaltenders. I think they're going to show up and show out. And like you brought up in your final point, too, our depth and aggression, being able to run that through and through as Pittsburgh only has two lines that are really consistent, where we have four, that's going to be the deciding factors and the contributing factors and why we should be able to get 
at least two point or two not two points two games out of these three games for four points and then or get the five points if you're able to draw the one into overtime yeah, yeah. but i thank you for joining again steel oh, you can follow him at Always steel flyers 52 and check out all the great uh contributors on the steelflyers.com like flyers nitty gritty off the wall hockey john payton on the radio pierlo slap shot <laughs> hockey writers goes on. Hockey <laughs> it just writers keeps getting Inc. bigger yeah. and bigger <laughs> um and then you can follow me at jj borick 26 on twitter and borick 6789 on Instagram. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode of The Grittiest Take, where Steele and I, Projo, previewed the Pittsburgh Penguins and Philadelphia Flyers series, which is weird to say with hockey. The three I know. Games. Let's bring the Anytime Anywhere into PPG Paints Arena. We're pretty good in that arena. And get a series win. Let's go Flyers. Go Flyers, as I'm wearing the hammer of the Schultz yeah, jersey. Baby. Have a great, safe, and pleasant <laughs> day, everybody. Peace out.